Hello everyone and welcome back to Mental's Place Crypt of the Next Dancer episode 7 if I do recall. We are going to uh, be jumping right into hardcore mode here and seeing what we can do. We do have a potion room right off the bat which is always a plus. Or at least I was pretty certain it was a potion room. I was right. But, you know, I could have been wrong. It could have been kind of trolly. Unfortunately, that means that we have no way to get into this blood shop here. Which is usually helpful for the start of a run. And we are going to be going down this way. And hopefully getting some good stuff. Um, obviously, my general wish on the first level is to get a... Oh my god, what was I thinking? is to get a um, weapon on the first floor. But that may or may not be possible. Unprofessional checking my phone while I'm recording, but that was a relatively easy room to take care of. I didn't need to pay that much attention to it. If there were an apple in here, I would very much love it forever. There is not. There is a magic tor freight torch, though, which is helpful in its own right. The monocle could be nice, too, but... Right now, we will roll with the torch and enjoy our greater visibility. As we continue to search our way for the exit, which must be through here, pretty much. Not directly through here, but it is going to be in the area. That yeah, was a mistake. I think the monocle costed 87, and we don't have enough for that, so just on to the next floor we go. That was rather silly. That worked out wonderfully, though. Exactly as planned. You can now take half a heart of damage without worry. Isn't gonna help us too much against Bat Boss here, but. We have this version at 3 health. I actually could have died right there. We got this under control right now. We're nine enemies away from being able to heal up a bit again. Got some more gold. Of course, hard mode, so to speak, of this game is a character that you unlock for beating hardcore mode with uh, Cadence here, which is uh, Aria, where if you miss a single beat or miss a uh, or take a single hit of damage, you die. You can only use the dagger throughout the run. It is pretty much the fuck you part of this game. And I can't wait to try it once I am a little bit more experienced with this. We still got no bombs, so we still can't go to that uh, blood shop or potential blood shop. So let's uh, head this way. Run is going pretty decently so well. I took that one hit of stupid damage early on. And since then things have been going pretty well. Oh my god. Until that right there. Damn it, Red Bat. Red Bats move every turn and they are and bats in general are the only enemy without a predictable pattern. 
They are going to move in a random direction each time. Good thing you had to go open up that path up top, otherwise that would have been a lot more difficult. Oh god, I was screwed. I was cornered. I was cornered! It was a tarp! It was a dirty tarp! Dirty tarps are much worse than clean tarps. At least clean tarps you can see coming. Let's go, we are going to draw this guy over. Dr. Skelebro. Getting used to uh, being able to use digs and just um, kind of. I love my multiplier slip there just to get myself lined up as I want to be with the dragon. But yeah, letting. Um, getting used to using digs and hopping back and forth to line yourself up with an enemy pattern takes a little while, but once you get used to it, it's not so bad to keep it going on. Um, I don't use the digs as much as I probably should, but it is certainly something that I know how to do when the need arises for it. Of course, Bat moved right into me. Get an apple, however, which is a plus. And I still haven't seen the shop. Where could that be at this point? Um, it's gotta be up off of this room up here. If I am reading the map right. Yes, there are two paths. One goes to the shop, which has blood in it. Torch and monocle. I would like to get the monocle, but torch is gonna be my first priority. And then we're gonna come kill these guys. There was an example of using the digging to make an enemy make a move when I was waiting for it. We can't afford the monocle. Uh, I don't really want the cat. The cat of nine tails is actually a really, really nice weapon. It lets you move while you're uh, while you are um, attacking. But, at the same time, it is, um... It's one of those things where you might attack when you don't realize you're going to attack. And that can be, even when you're moving anyway, it can be kind of a little bit off-putting. Come on, Black Skelly. Of course the bat attacked me. Thank you, RN Jesus. Thank you, RN Jesus. We can get Explorer's Boots. Not the worst thing. Essentially what these are going to do is let me move through water freely, as if it wasn't there. And again, I forgot that the bat could potentially have moved and killed me because it was a 3 health bat, not a 2 health bat. So I played things risky there unintentionally and I got away safely from it. It's always nice. It's nice to get away with things once in a while. Thank you guys for all lining up there and, you know, just getting slaughtered in order. It's appreciated. Oh my god, the ballet shoes. We're actually gonna get these and the obsidian armor. Ballet shoes mean that no matter how many beats I miss, no matter how many times I dig stuff that I'm not able to dig, 
I will never lose my combo except from getting hit. So, that means that my Obsidian Armor is going to act as 3 Strength Armor until I get hit. Once I get hit once, it'll drop itself down to, you know, 0 Strength or to 1 Strength, and then it'll work its way back up from there and so on and so forth. But, when I am uh, at my full combo here, it essentially kind of brings Cadence up to- oh god. It essentially kind of puts Cadence in the same area as the Bard, in that the combo becomes more of something that is held until you mess up and take a hit. I want to buy that uh, health container, because that'll also give me a full heart of health as well. And the beat becomes less important when you have the uh, ballet shoes. It becomes more important to not take hits, which I just did anyway. Gotta remember, I don't have the Explorer's Boots anymore. Oh, Red Bat! I hate you! Belly shoes are very rare and a very nice item to get. So at 50 coins we can transmogrify our weapons or whatever else we want to change depending on how the floor goes. Assuming that we have time to get back here once we have that much money. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. The first song is decently long. What you got, shopkeeper? An apple that I can buy for 25, but other than that, oh my god. Why did I do that? Not the best start of things to this run. I'm gonna go rob the shop. Oops, I accidentally bought the dagger. Oh well. Uh, what is that ring of luck? Yeah, I'll take ring of luck. Apple means I can get back to full health. Unfortunately, I wasted gold and we probably won't be able to afford the transmogrify shop. Um, because I didn't realize I picked up a ring right away. And I walked into the dagger before uh, doing anything about that. But on the bright side, at least it was a golden dagger, which is going to build us up money a little bit quicker. Um, obviously, I would have preferred to have the money, but... Doesn't matter, because I got screwed by that monkey. Once that monkey had a hold of me, I had no chance of getting away from that minotaur. See what our shop has in stock today. Pickaxe, I would like the torch. I might as well just grab now. It's only seven gold, and it is very, very nice to have a little bit of extra vision. Let's we'll see things like this. Twenty-five coins. I wouldn't have seen without that torch. Let's see what we can find. There is a hidden chest over here. War drum. Um, that's a thing. Essentially, the war drum, as we play it, is going to increase our damage. For the next attack only. So essentially for standing in place and keeping the beat, 
you get a little bit of a damage boost, which isn't a bad thing. Certainly not as helpful on this character as you would think. But it just, since you can stand still and just lose your combo, um, and the damage multiplier, you have to take several beats to get built up to a huge amount. But at the same time, it is um, still useful, um, and it's very, very useful on like Aria mode, where you can't miss a beat or anything, because then you have a way to stand still and draw enemies to you without needing to take an actual action, which is a benefit. I don't think I ever ran across any, uh, combo shots on this run. Hello, X marks the spot blocks. Are you anywhere? I can't afford the pickaxe, unfortunately. Wouldn't have been able to even without the torch, so that's not really an issue. Can I make it? Can I make it? I just barely made it, and I walked in on the last beat. I decided to mess around a little bit with the uh, timing there, and it turned out putting me in on the last beat as the song ended, which is pretty awesome because I did not actually know that I was going to do that. Ring of Luck, very nice. That means that better weapons are going to be spawning. You will get the backpack. The holster might not be a bad idea if we pick up a gold eye and a glass weapon. Um, for right now it's not really worth anything to me, but if we do go for that shrine of glass or anything, that could give us a way to have a backup when our weapon breaks. There we go. There are things I would like from there, but I don't have the health to do it. And I just realized that after using my bomb. Dragon is dead. Take care of these guys. I mean, at this point, with no way to get another uh, better weapon, I am tempted to go with that Shrine of Glass. Because that's at least going to be some kind of an improvement for us. Song is almost done, so let's make this quick. Again, if we're going class, getting the holster is not a bad idea. Because it means that we will be able to, uh, you know, make things happen when we lose our weapon instead of just having to work our way back to the shard. Ring of Might is even extra damage. Um, you know, maybe not the most worthwhile thing when we already have a glass weapon. Oh god. Before I could even react. I will eventually start doing the um, daily challenge on this on video. But that is going to rely on... Um, once I feel I'm good enough to where I can concentrate on the music and the gameplay and the commentary at once. For now, I kind of stick to doing those off-camera because I can focus a little bit better. Um, but those will definitely be a thing that will start appearing in the videos as I get a little bit better at hardcore mode here. 
stop doing things like that, you know? And that. Doing score runs in this game is actually really, really, um... Really, really strategically deep, I guess is the best way I'm trying to put it. Um, in that you kind of have to... I mean, there are things you kind of have to do to make them work well. For example, if you kill the shopkeeper, which there is currently only one way to do, uh, one very specific way to do, you are um, given an item called the Crown of Greed, which doubles every gold pile you pick up, but also makes you lose one gold per beat. So it kind of puts it where, you know, you kind of have to take that, but now you have to weigh every move you're making against how much gold you're going to lose versus how much you're going to gain. Which gives the game a lot of depth to it. There's a bat room behind that. There's a gold shop. Let's see what's in the regular shop. Behind glass shop. Let's see what's in the regular shop first. You know what? I say we go with this and this. I say let's not go glass just yet. We will go here to pick up. Oh god, it was a glass rapier. Oh man. That is one of the best. Uh, that is the highest damage potential weapon in the game, as far as I know. So, unfortunately, I don't get, you know, the highest damage weapon in the game that can one-shot pretty much anything. But I also uh, don't have to worry that if I get hit, I'm going to lose my weapon, which is a plus in its own right. Oh god, what have I done? Oops. Okay, one more run in this video. Not a bad start, that Minotaur showed me a little bit of the way. War Drum, again, not the most useful item for, you know, standard runs. But it does have its use. I am starting to lose the beat a lot more often now, which tells me that I've probably recorded a bit too much. I'm, I have probably been recording for a bit too long straight at the moment. I have not taken a break from recording today, so... That's a thing. So if I saw a rave, we did have a uh, glass shot there, which is not the worst thing. In fact, we can get a holster here, which makes it more uh, reasonable. I feel like I've missed a lot of this floor in the top right there. So that's where we're going to head. Oh yeah, there are at least two paths up here. Sacrificing my combo for the sake of being able to not get killed when I move. Okay, better. Now... Where was that shop I blew my way into? There it is, let's pick up this gold pile here first. Can't afford the weapon, and... That's really all I would want out of there, so... Technically speaking, the glass shovel is the safest glass item to pick up. Because the, uh... Shovel, when it breaks, turns into a glass shard that can dig for one strength, the same as the regular shovel. So if all you have is a regular shovel, picking up the glass shovel, you know, you're gonna get, at worst, the same digging power. And unlike the weapons, being unable to dig for a turn 
or being unable to dig in one situation is unlikely to kill you, it's possible, but it's not nearly as likely as being unable to attack because you got hit. Well, that's convenient. That was essentially free. Now you can get a spear or a glass dagger. We're gonna go with the spear. Pack of holding is also not bad. You know what? We might as well pick up the glass dagger as well. Closer our spear. When that breaks, we can just switch back to the spear. I didn't actually realize that it was quite so cheap when I picked it up I mean, when I saw it at first. That was one case where digging would put me on proper timing, where I was off timing to begin with. This one isn't shaping up too poorly. Of course, things can go horribly wrong at any moment. I would rather have the spear than the broadsword, and I'm keeping the glass dagger until I take damage and lose it. So, that broadsword is just gonna stay there. That is, I believe, everything on the floor. So, to the exit we go. We're gonna make it to zone one, level three. Jump down trapdoor instead of going down the stairs. Lost my multiplier, but not a big deal. We don't have anything obsidian, so. Hello, Mimic. Titanium Broadsword. Okay, um... We will certainly keep that as backup for the Glass Dagger. Of course, it's very possible that if we lose our Glass Dagger... ...then we have, uh, died anyway. That is not a potion room. There we go. Minotaur is good. Thanks for watching everyone. With that, I am going to uh, call it quits for the moment. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Hope you continue to enjoy the series. We'll be back tomorrow with something new, or some uh, new video in general. Um, but thank you guys, have a good one, and I will see you next time. Take care everyone, and I'll see you later.